hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking this video so I want to show you guys something that I got it was my goodwill find and that was the season of Dawson's Creek Dawson's Creek was one of my favorite shows growing up like I would be out oh, my speed on I would be out with my friends and I would say I have to go home because Dawson's Creek's coming Dawson's Creek's coming on and I was in love with Joshua Jackson Pacey was my guy uh, I just loved it so much so I don't even think I have a DVD player to watch it but it's like a keepsake for me you know so I want to talk about this because in my last video I made I my impression of Amy was that she was fake I did not think Amy was a real person. I thought she was somebody that Creepshow Art had just made up to kind of put the blame on. So imagine my surprise when this Emily comes comes out and states she's the Amy. Like I mind blown. Like I just couldn't even fathom. And I don't know, guys. This whole thing to me is so concerning and I know this is a very unpopular opinion because I have seen everybody going at talking about creep show art talking about what a horrible person person she was and like what she's done and how bad it is yes I mean I agree like if what this Emily is saying what she had to go through for I mean this long I don't, I don't even know what to say because I just don't, this is like something you see on a Lifetime movie. Or, I mean, this is single white female rabbit in the pot. This is, some, like, I've never seen this with my, like, in real time, real life. To me, it's like an adult acting like this. Like, I could see teenage girls you know, being petty and stuff like that. And this went on for years and years. Like, there was so much that had to go in on this. Like, so much time. Like, oh my gosh, I couldn't... Wow. Um, I also want to state that if you are in an abusive relationship, I will put resources below. Because to me, this also kind of shows... How far this can go because this is what you know Emily has said that she was in an abusive relationship with this Anthony and that's where I'm at like with all of it it's like what is the motive I understand you know if he wasn't abusive abusive to her like I could see what his motive was that you know she left him and you know he's upset by that he lost control he don't have the control of her anymore but, like, what is Shannon's motive, you know? Like, if your boyfriend is so obsessed with his ex, like, to me, that would just be a deal breaker. Like, I don't understand how she even got caught up in all this. I also want to say I feel horrible for, like, all her friends, those who she they thought were her friends. I know a lot of people are expecting videos out of, you know, some of these people, and I don't think nobody owes nobody owes anybody a video you know they are grieving a friendship that they thought that they had that to them they probably don't even know what to think they're trying to probably gather their thoughts I also feel bad for you know her audience and those who used to really look up to her I mean a lot of people really looked up to her they thought she was fighting the good fight they thought they had an ally in her so then to find out what we know now and see the things we see and how she really felt that can be devastating that can I mean I'm sure there's a lot of people feel very betrayed it's it's shitty you know it really it's upsetting especially because it makes people not trust others it makes you really wonder who you're watching and what they who they really are and what they're really about and if they're hiding this you know whole other life it's it's bizarre but I watched the video and 
I have questions, you know, I'm curious about some stuff, I don't know, and I think that this might help, you know, help me figure some things out. And I know you guys have the scoop, like you guys, you guys know what's going on. I am sure you guys know these questions that I have. And the first thing I, I wanted to know was whose channel was started first? And I seen that Creepshow Art was three years ago, Emily was five years ago, so to me it seemed like Emily's video was first. But here's what I don't really know. How this all started from the beginning, beginning, okay? So I know Emily was with Anthony, but did Creepshow Art already have her channel when she met Anthony? Is that like maybe why he um, seeked her out or, cause I know somebody said that they had worked together. So then did they kind of like all run in a circle? I don't, I can't, I don't know the answer to this because like they're two pretty big, you know, channels. They kind of do the same thing. They're in the art community. Like, I don't know. Did they, were they acquaintances of each other? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So somebody in her video, she stated somebody emailed her. And I'm talking about Emily. Somebody emailed her to let her know that she was being copied by another creator, that somebody else's channel was just like hers. Now, in this video, Emily says that she thinks now, knowing what she knows, that she thinks that was cre um, actually creep show art. So, I do want to say that, actually, last night, somebody came and emailed me and said the same exact thing, that they thought another creator out there was copying me. So, this definitely could have been a sub who did this. But with that said, if she's been getting all this weird stuff, the paranoid paranoia was probably very heightened so there everything to her probably seemed suspicious and I wouldn't blame her from what she was saying um but why I'm saying this is because she at that time she said she'd already been on YouTube for two to three years and that was from my understanding the first time she actually reached out to creep show art so I'm wondering like was that when her and Anthony got together. That's why I just, I don't know yet. Uh, so again, I know Anthony's motive, but what is, what is Creepshow Art's motive? Why would one do this? She has 416,000 subs and it's hard to watch. Like the potential that was there. Like if she would have just used all that for good, could you imagine? It's, it's hard to watch all that just be flushed down the drain. Like, it, like I don't, it's hard. Uh, so, 2017, Emily started taking proof. Um, my opinion, and this is just my opinion, okay, guys? I know, everyone's like, eh. Whenever Emily showed those pictures that supposedly, allegedly, Anthony was taken, stating that he was in her town. You know, he was taking pictures of buildings close by her to make her think, okay, I'm close by you, I'm in town, be scared of me. And then, you know, had writing on it. To me, that wasn't really proof because, and I could be wrong, but I didn't see anything in there actually leading to him. Nothing in there told me, I mean, it could have been her. Like, she could have took those photos and said he did it. Like. Not saying that's what happened, but I'm saying, I know a lot of people are saying, well, why didn't she go to the police? This should have been investigated. That's why, because if she would have took those photos to the police, that's exactly what they would have said. How do we know he was the one that did that? How do we know you didn't do that? There's, there's really no proof. When it comes to a stalker case, it's very hard to get proof. They're not dumb. They know how to cover their butt. They know how to put stuff out that messes with you, but, but still doesn't link back to them, you know? And that, goes back to the whole IP tracker thing. So in my last video, I stated that it may be hard for people to do the spoofing and the, you know, the IP tracking. Well, it seems like it's not because from my understanding, Emily and Creepshow Art both did this to each other. So Emily put out an IP tracker and Anthony, I guess, took the bait and doing this, it pinged and showed that it was at their new place where Creepshow Art and Anthony had lived. 
and also it pinged at um, a library that they had been when they were living out of their car they were using the internet from the library it pinged off there when this Emily was hacked on Facebook it showed the login as in Cal San Jose California and that's where Anthony and uh, Creepshow Art was living that's public information they no longer live there so it's not doxing so she hired a private investigator she ran out of money I mean it cost a lot of money to do this I'm really surprised she even hired a private investigator taking this to court costs a lot of money but I will say if there's a GoFundMe account to get to the bottom of what's going on I would donate right now like I would to just to find the truth out to get to the bottom of it uh, <clears throat> but then they told her like there's really no way to prove the sock accounts are you know his and, and creep shows the anonymous post on locale so these posts anonymous anonymously were saying how Emily was a horrible mother said she was abusive she was neglectful and now that we know that these IP address came back to creep show art on locale the PO box so they talked back and forth and Creepshow Art said she would give Emily her P.O. box so the investigator and or they can open the case and try to see if it linked back to her. It's like she was trying to help clear her name. To me, I felt like she was inserting herself, but then she also wanted it to be known that this Brandon guy had access to the, the P.O. box. And I'm wondering if she did that because she knew if it did come back to that P.O. box, she could, you know, pretty much throw this Brandon underneath the bus. Okay, supposedly after the whole P.O. box thing, like all of it kind of calmed down. It stopped for a while. And then came this Brita filter. This is like, this is where I'm like, oh, the connivory. So in this video, video Emily states that she cannot 100% say that this Brita filter is fake. She cannot 100% prove this Brita filter is creep show art. But what happened is this Brita filter, she uh, got a hold of Emily and she stated that she was on her brother's computer and she seen some stalkerish stuff on there that he had pictures of her, um, that she was naked in the bathtub and said that he was only 15 years old and that his family felt like he needs some mental treatment and that he had been doing this for like five years. Now, what do you guys think? Was this kind of the cover did Creepshow make this person up to do this to kind of cover her tracks is to kind of like for her, this Emily to, okay, start looking at this Brita Filter's brother. Maybe he's the one that was behind all this. Like, it's, what do you think? It's, it's weird. Uh, then again, both of them were doing the hacking, you know, the IP, the tracking. Creepshow Arts deleting like her story times. Another thing that I found interesting is that Creepshow Art in her video about her being stalked, she stated that she deleted all the emails proving this. Why in the world would you delete that? To me, that is a huge red flag. That to me is like nobody would do that. That doesn't even make sense. So and this is when everything started changing for me. I went back and I watched the eight year stalker video by uh, Creep Show Art. It was almost like she literally took Emily's story and she made it her own. And this is when I really started getting very upset because she started talking about being, you know, in a very mentally bad place. There was talk of suicidal ideology. Uh, she talked about how this Amy how she really liked this Amy, how she looked up to her, how she wanted to be her, how she was raised in this strict, you know, um, I believe she was a Catholic schoolgirl, you know, very strict. She wasn't allowed to do anything. This Amy was able to go out, go to the mall. She had all these emo boys who were just flocking all over her, wanted to be with her. They did cool things for her and, you know, they would bring roses. They would sneak in her window. They would watch scary movies. It's almost like Shannon wanted that life. To me, this is very, it's sad. Like, it's, you start wondering and questioning things now. My other video, I was like, you know, you can't always blame 
mental illness, okay? I hate when people always blame mental illness, especially when something bad, they do something bad and they want to blame mental illness because that just puts a very bad stigma on mental illness. I mean, sometimes you just got to take accountability. Sometimes they're just shitty people out there, you know? But how calculating this was, how long this was drawn out for years and years, this was orchestrated. This was so, like, manipulating. Like, it took years of, like, something's not right here. Nobody in their, like, right mind. I don't think so. This is just my opinion. I don't feel like anybody who's just thinking clearly would do this for this long. It makes no sense. So then it makes me wonder about this Anthony guy. So the way Emily talked was he's very abusive, okay? She made him sound like he was this monster. So it makes me wonder, you know, and I don't want to give Creepshow a break, but is she under this guy's spell too? Like, is he doing this to her as well? Like, what is going on? I don't know, you guys. Let me know below what you guys think. If you have the answers to, you know, the questions I asked in this video, let me know what you guys think about everything. And I know this ain't going to be a popular opinion. I know that. But I am very worried. You know, I am. I'm very worried that she may feel like the whole entire internet hates her right now. And I just, I don't know, guys. I just, I don't want to see anybody like that, you know? And... If you are in an abusive relationship or you know somebody's in an abusive relationship, I'm going to leave below the, you know, some links to help, some resources that you can call to, to help in that situation. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe, and leave me a comment, and I will see you guys really soon. Bye, guys.